Yes, you do. <laughs> All right, we are live on Facebook. Uh, good morning, everybody. At least it's still morning here in California. Um, I am Katrina Sawa. I'm known as the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach because I kick people in their butts to get stuff done so they can get a lot more clients and make a lot more money and make a bigger impact in their business, doing what they love. And today I brought on one of my amazing virtual assistants, Angela Hall. Say hi, Angela. Hi. <laughs> Angela likes to be behind the camera, behind the scenes, but I wanted to introduce her to you today because she is amazing. We've been working together for almost over three years, both of us, and uh, she's in my Live Big Mastermind, and then I've been working with her. Uh, she's been working as my VA and her team. Now she has a team, she's grown, she's got all these clients all over the world, and it's just really fun to see, and she is your tech genius. So if you have ever had frustrations about technology, oh my God, it is so nice to have you, Angela, in my hip pocket that I can just go, oh my God, this went out. Oh my God, the website's down. Oh my God, how do I fix this? Like she, you need an Angela, you need a that helpful chick as her company, you need that in your back pocket. So I would love them to tell you a little, or love you, Angela, to tell everybody a little bit more about you, how you got started, because people are always curious, how did you fall into this, you know, kind of stuff, so. Okay, uh, I'll try to not give you the long drawn out story. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we like story. <laughs> well, basically, um, when I got started, I found out that I had degenerative disc, and so I couldn't, I couldn't work a regular job because I couldn't sit very long, stand very long. Um, and so I ended up not working and my daughter was supporting me and that didn't go well with me. So I started searching online to find ways that I could work from home. Um, I found a training that uh, taught me how to build websites and then got my first client who was a UK internet marketer. And she started teaching me, um, all the stuff she used infusionsoft click funnels um you know just everything and uh, the more i would learn the more i wanted to learn um so before you know it i just i've there's not many software out there that um that you use in your business that i have not used um, <laughs> and most of them are pretty similar so i tend to not be too intimidated by new software um even if i've never used it before and I love that about you because I have lots of business owner clients and they all have such a variety of technology that they come to me with. And sometimes we move them and a lot of times though we don't because it's just not practical to move them. So we need someone like you to step in and go, oh, okay, this is what you do with that regarding your follow up or your autoresponders or whatever that is. So that's so, not, it's so amazing that you're not just narrowed. There's so many VAs out there, you guys, seriously, that will know just one thing and that's all they recommend because that's what they know and they don't want you doing a different software because then they have to go learn it or they lose the business, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I, I do have my favorites um, and I do have my ones I don't like. <laughs> uh, so if at all possible, I try not to work in those, but you know, it is what it is. I'm not, it's, it's more about what the client needs. So. Uh, yeah. And that's what I like about you too, is you evaluate what the client needs. Like I recommend some of the softwares that she's not a fan of you guys <laughs> to my clients. And then she gets them as a client and she's like, Arr. but she understands that like my thinking behind it from as a marketing and business coach, it's like, we need certain things. We also need to keep the budget down. Like we don't all need to spend $300 on infusion software, quick funnels or all these Kajabis. And, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Those are some great technologies. And I've been in some of them and we've been in and out of them and she's helped me get in and out of them. And I've spent tens of thousands of dollars getting in and out of them. Um, and, and we, she's really good. We both are really good at helping you determine which softwares are the right ones for you and your business and your personality, your level of skill, your price point, right? And a lot of VAs and business coaches don't do this. They do their favorites and or what they're gonna make money from, and that's all they'll tell you. And oh, it drives me crazy, it drives her crazy, it's, ah, we hate that. So my little rant for today. 
Um, tell them some of your favorite things to do with clients. Oh, favorite. Um, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> I, I love getting them more automated. That's one of my favorite things because they, you don't know what you don't know. And so a lot of people um, think that they're stuck with what they're doing and having to do everything manually. And then I talk to them and they discover, oh, I can automate this. So that's to me is the goal because you don't want to sp be spending all of that time that you could be spending on things that make you money. Um, so that's one of my favorite things is, is helping them discover the power of automation. Ah, <laughs> yeah. It is. It's so important. <laughs> um, yeah. What and, do you think is one of the things that people always make the mistake around? I mean, 99% of the time, the people that come to you are doing this and that is just the opposite of what they could be doing. Perhaps is there something like that? So there's, we could warn people. <laughs> well, there's there's two things. One might be a little controversial to some people. Um, mm -hmm. They like this company. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of hosting their website with GoDaddy because that's where they bought their domain. And I understand that. But in my opinion, <laughs> in my experience, GoDaddy is not WordPress friendly. Um, as a company, they tend to charge you for every little thing when there's so many other hosting companies and in my opinion, better hosting companies that your SSL secure uh, certificate is included, which is that little padlock that Google says you now have to have on your website. Um, so that's, yeah, probably. it's like 200 bucks and Google wants to charge you or GoDaddy wants to charge you extra. Yeah. So I know I'm with you and I went kicking and screaming from GoDaddy too. And I think actually I just had a charge, like I'm paying for hosting somewhere with GoDaddy still, but that's not the point. The point is that you're right. I get clients all the time. They, I say, go buy your domain name. Don't buy anything else from to GoDaddy. Don't buy anything else. Yeah. And then they buy it and they say, well, I signed up for this email thing and then the 365 and then $300 later, they're into GoDaddy for all this other stuff. I said, I told you not to buy anything else because yeah. you don't need that. Right. Yeah. Ugh, it drives me crazy. I would say the, the other thing is with to do with images. So a lot of people don't realize how much images can slow down your website. Mm. So they'll take a picture with their camera on their phone and a f an image that you take on your phone, I can't remember the exact file size, but the dimensions are typically around 6,000. Big. Yeah, really big. And they're definitely in the file name is always a number. And so what you want to do is one, save it, get it to your computer somehow, or if you have the ability to edit on your phone, that's great. Make it smaller, rename it. So it's something that you can find later mm. and then upload it to your website. Um, and the reason for this is that you have a website for five, six, seven onwards years. You have an image that you uploaded when you first started your website. You can search in your media folder on your website for that image to use it on other pages. But a lot of people, if you've named it this number, you <laughs> get that number from your phone, then you can't find it. And so you end up uploading it again. And then you have multiple images of the exact same image. Are you saying this now? Because this is still what I, I've done in the past. Like, this is a big mistake. I know I've done, you guys. But I started my websites way back in 2005, I think. Or I don't even know. So, and we've progressed. And I still think I do this. And so the importance of not doing this, is, it sounds like it's really huge. And I need to train myself to not do this, too. And you'd yeah. think I'd know better. You've got, I think you've gotten a lot better since I first mentioned it to you, but no, it's, it, I don't it's, like you still, you know, well, I have looked at you like your most recent uploads and they are named, they're actually named. Oh so. yes. I do a lot of screenshots though and screenshotting yeah. things and those things I know. Yeah. Don't, don't leave the name of your images screenshot. <laughs> I know. And then you have to say, okay, about what month did I screenshot that? Okay. Yeah. Like it was, it was probably around the time of my live event in 2018. So April, I got to look in 20, uh, April, 2018 screenshots. And that's where I'll find the image. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's chaos. You guys, seriously, I know but do what she says, not what I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. 
Uh, so, I mean, technology can be exhausting for some of us who are creatives and we get ideas and we just want to implement and we just want to run the webinar today, but we need a web page first and then we need a funnel and then we need an autoresponder and then we need a, an image to go with the website. And it's like, oh my God, it's exhausting. Just forget it. Yeah. Just forget it. I, I don't do this necessarily, but I see a lot of people doing it. Just forget it. I don't know how to create a web page. I don't know how to add another page to my site. I don't know how to even create an autoresponder in my email marketing system. It's exhausting. So what I can tell you is that hiring virtual assistants, I have multiple virtual assistants and I have, now you have a team, so it's not just you anymore. You have people, different people that do different things. And now you take on things like social media marketing and, and email marketing with people, which I don't think you did that in the beginning, right? You no. branched out and expanded. Yeah. And trusted now it's hard. It's hard as a virtual assistant to trust other people to do good enough work. Also to trust people, to bring them on to take care of the client, but also trust that you'll make enough money to be able to pay them and you, right? I mean, I know you went through that whole growing stage and uh, how was that? <laughs> uh, well, if there's any virtual assistants watching, I have a very uh, big piece of advice. If you are thinking about expanding and growing your team, um, bring on subcontractors, which mm. is not always easy. Um, and another thing is think about how much you're going to pay them. So how many and approximately how many hours a month you're going to use them and then save that amount up before you bring somebody on mm. and it's going to save you because there's no feeling worse in the world, in my opinion, than at the, be the beginning of the month. And you have to wait for your clients to pay before you can pay your team. Mm. So, so true. I wish I had done that in the beginning. I've since with more growth, I've been able to get to that point, but it would have been so much easier if I had started out that way. <laughs> so you were ahead of the game every month instead of waiting. Yes. Yeah. Because then what if your client pays you late or, you know, their card declines or something like that, you know, it happens. And, and I've been there too, where I've hired assistants and I, and if cash flow, I, you know, being on the roller coaster of cash flow for many years, uh, one month could be really bad. And you're like, okay, I can't use you this month. So the, the VA, the virtual assistant is like regularly working for you. And all of a sudden you like, nope, can't pay you. So you can't do the work for me because I don't want to be responsible to pay you because I don't have the money. And that's a tough spot too. It is. So I get that. Mm. Yeah, and I just I don't want to be that kind of business owner. Yeah. No, and no, none of us. I well, I won't say none. I know there's some slimy people out there who will do that, but we are not that way, and we do not treat people that way. So, um, what's next on the horizon for you? What are you doing now, and how are you expanding? Or clients you're you're working with these days? What are you looking for? Um, well. Uh, I found that the best way to find out what you love to do is just to step out and try things. Um, so that I couple, I think it's been a couple months now I started teaching a class. Um, so what we do is we meet three times a month on zoom for about an hour because I'm technology with technology any more than that. And people's brains tend to explode. <laughs> so, um, basically how it works is, uh, we come on, people ask me questions and I show them, how to do whatever it is they want to know how to do, whether it's how to do something on their website, how to do something in their email service, um, how to resize their images, how to do quick video editing, um, how to do something on their Facebook page, you name it. If And if I don't know, I'll just tell you, I don't know, but I'll find out. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm looking to do some more, um, teaching. I quite enjoy that. Yeah. And that's more like a membership where you pay a monthly fee and then they come to classes and learn these things. So it's more for the person, the entrepreneur who wants to learn a few things about techie, right? Rather than only delegating. Now they're probably delegating things too, but they want to be a little bit more. It is, I think, really important for an entrepreneur to know 
a few things. You gotta know how everything flows together with your technology, your website, your backend, your database, your email marketing, your social media, how the leads and the marketing and the follow-up and the sales processes flow. That is, you don't have to know every little button and thing you gotta click to make it happen. You need to know the um, strategy and theory behind the process, right? Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. As an entrepreneur. So you might need to know a couple little things like how to log in, how to create a page or, you know, how to make a change on a page or, you know, make a quick uh, product in your shopping cart or send a quick email to your list. Just some basic stuff. And then you don't have to do it all the time. But I think it's so important to be empowering yourself to learning some of those things. Yeah. And it's also good to like if you have a virtual assistant right now, um, it will help you be able to communicate with your virtual assistant better because I've had clients who've emailed me and trying to explain to me what it is they want me to do, but they don't know what to call things. So yeah, it ends up being this back and forth conversation because they don't know that this is called a page title, you know, like I want to change the page title or the permalink or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's, I would be welcome also if like, for example, if they are working with a virtual assistant already um, who maybe only knows admin things and they want to learn more techie things. So it'd be a good opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, you have a virtual assistant you already like working with and that's great. Um, maybe they want to learn a little more of the website stuff so they can help you in that area too. Yeah. Yeah. And this stuff is worth thousands, you guys, of knowledge. So you can actually make a lot more money, but I know you're not charging that what's the charge for this monthly awesome amazing training that you give uh for well, right now it's just 39 dollars a month um and as i said it's three calls a month um i wanted to keep the price low during these times because i know a lot of people are not making um as much money as they were um i do plan to raise the price later on but anybody that gets in now will be locked in at that price Oh, you guys, I'm telling you, run to the page. I know she'll put the link when we're done in the comments for her $39. What do you call it? Um, it's the online, oh gosh, virtual business technology training. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. For entrepreneurs. Yeah. And then I know you also teach virtual assistants. So virtual assistants need to learn. You know, the ones that are focused on, I only know Infusionsoft and that's all I want to work with. And the da 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 da. If they want to expand their business and work with other clients, or recommend other clients, you teach virtual assistants these kinds of things too, right? Absolutely. So it's yeah. a much deeper dive training though. So if you know virtual assistants who need more virtual, you know, techie training, send them to Angela because she teaches virtual assistants, which is all the deep stuff that we don't want to learn. Like, <laughs> right? And the coding and all that crap that I don't want to learn that. I want to learn just enough to be dangerous and make a couple quick changes uh, in case I need something last minute, right? In case yeah. we're working on the weekend and we know our virtual, we don't expect our virtual assistant to work on the weekends. So um, you got to be able to do stuff yourself. Now, one thing I do recommend when I, because I have a whole ebook on how to delegate to an assistant also, but you have something too that's free, then go get. But the one thing that I recommend, and so many people don't do this, they hire a virtual assistant and then they may talk to them one time when they're interviewing them and they never talk to them again. They just email a bunch of stuff. I'm like, ah, big mistake. I believe, and I think you agree, is that you should have weekly calls until you don't need weekly calls, which could be 90 days. It could be a good amount of time. You gotta learn each other's personalities. You gotta set expectations and boundaries and um, realistic timelines. And when you're first starting to delegate, you don't know to say, here, I want this done and I want it done by Tuesday. Is that possible for you? And you know what? And not all VAs are comfortable talking like that either. Some of them are really shy or they're not really good business people. And so they won't give you timelines or deadlines either. And then you're, you're thinking it's going to be done on Tuesday and they're thinking a week from Tuesday. So you are totally not on the same page. So having calls on a regular basis with your VAs until you really get in sync and then maybe going to every other week, and then maybe going to every three weeks or every four weeks, but still 
check in. Angela and I still do calls. We might do them every couple months now, but we've known each other for over three years, okay? And we know each other's style, and if I send her a quick little email, she's not gonna go, oh, she's mad at me, like, oh, like somebody might, <laughs> like, because I'll just send quick emails, because I'm busy, you know? I'm like, oh, I have a thought, but I'm gonna send it to Angela. I don't have to add the fluff for her. So I tell people when I hire them, look, I forget to add the fluff a lot of times because I'm doing 10 things at once. And so just don't take that personally if she doesn't take that person. Now, her people might, so she has to filter that. <laughs> Maybe add the fluff to send to her people. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, don't, I definitely don't need the fluff. Um, just I, prefer, <laughs> I forget. I took a personality test at one time. I forget what the, I'm not into all of that, but it, I thought it was interesting because it did fit me. I'm the type of person who in communication, I just want to give me the facts. Yeah. I yeah. don't need all the sweet introductions and yeah. Right. Just tell me what it is you want me to do. Yeah. Tell me you need it done by and I'll let you know what, what I've got on my end. <laughs> if that's a practical expectation, right? For sure. And that's the kind of communication you need with whoever you hire, really, whoever you hire. So, Hopefully you guys have got to know Angela a little bit today. Let me just uh, tell you where to go get her free ebook. You can go to, uh, to thathelpfulchick.com and there's a free ebook there for you. Please, please, please go get it. Get on her radar. Get into her $39 online training if you want to learn more techie. It will be the easiest way. I charge like hundreds of dollars for a call. And sometimes clients come to calls and show me, how do you use Canva? How do you use that? And I'll tell them, but it's much cheaper to go to Angela and be in her program and she can tell you, you know, so I'm just saying like, it's a practical thing that I've been trying to get you to do for, I don't even know how long, maybe like a year. How long, yes. why did it take so long? It's hard to kick your butt all the way to Vir in Virginia when I'm in California, right? Yeah, that's true. Probably if I was closer, my butt would have been kicked a lot sooner. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's how it is. And uh, anything else you want to share? I don't know. Last thoughts for people. Well, to be honest, I had a thought a minute ago, but it just left me. <laughs> Maybe it'll come to me later and I'll put it in the comments. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure introducing you to everybody. And uh, you guys, seriously, don't wait around to figure this stuff out yourself. Go get some help and support. And, uh, you know, if you need help with the big picture planning and, and growing your business, I'm here to talk to you too, right? I really am. I really, I'm so passionate about helping people really make more money consistently without killing yourself or doing the things you hate, like figuring out how to make it easier and more simple for you. I, I have to say that uh, if it hadn't been for, for Katrina, I would not be where I am right now because, mm. uh, it's kind of a interesting story how I first discovered her as well, but I'll save that for another time. But um, <laughs> tell it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear how it's changed because you say it differently every time. It's so funny. <laughs> so I found this online summit, and um, Katrina was uh, one of the speakers on the summit. And I don't even remember how many speakers were on the summit, but she stuck out to me. And so I signed up for her free call and got on her free call and she invited me to come to her next event out in California. Now, when I, at the time that I met her, I, I wasn't making very much money. So I actually had to, to borrow money from my parents to, for my plane and hotel to get out to California. And to Katrina teaches what's called an easy enough offer. And so she invites people to make offers at her events and at her event um, during my easy yes offer, I made enough to cover my airplane ticket and my hotel. And so i pretty much made the decision that day that I was going to hire her as my coach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's just grown since then. I'm, I've been resistant and they'll probably tell you <laughs> I've been resistant to a lot of things. Like you said, I like to be behind the scenes. So this is, is not my comfort zone right here, but, um, 
probably if I had implemented half the stuff that she's told me in the last three years, I'd be twice as far as I am. But um, since I started with her, um, it was just me um, and another gal that uh, worked part time. And now I have a small team. I have th probably three times as many clients as I did. Um, I have a lot more time off <laughs> thanks to her. So, um, yeah, it's mm. and I, I have, I have some clients who are coaches and I've have some clients who are coaches that I've gotten rid of. Um, so I have experience in that way with, um, the comparison. And, um, I have to say, I'm very pleased that Katrina not only cares about my business, but she cares about me too. Um, just very, very, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not great. So great with words sometimes, but, uh, Katrina is, is, a. I never, I have not regretted my choice. Mm. Not one day. Oh. Well, me neither. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? We're a great team. Yeah. And I see us going far. And I know you've had some conflict uh, in the past. Like, who doesn't hate conflict, right? Mm -hmm. And it was really hard for you to let some clients go that weren't so nice. And, you know, we had to work through that just as much as we have to work through getting clients. We have to work through the process as an entrepreneur to release not so nice clients. And so that's been a challenge. Um, but I want to commend you for the very first thing you said, which was you borrowed money. You saw what you needed. You felt the the pull and you did something about it that was probably not easy to do, which is at how old were you when you asked for money from your parents in your oh, 40s? Yeah. Um, in your 40s, right? I'm, <laughs> I've been there too in my 40s asking money from my parents. My husband asked for money for an attorney for us like not too long ago, okay? And but we've paid it all back and you know, it, some people are not willing to eat that humble pie and or their ego gets in the way and I just want to commend you because I I think 95% of the people out there would not do that. And they would self-sabotage themselves. They would not get the success they wanted because they aren't able to get that one thing done. And that allowed it all to flow. You had to start somewhere. You had to get the money from somewhere to do the thing you knew you needed to do. And whether it was my workshop or hiring whoever, whatever, it doesn't matter. It was your decision that that caused this huge snowball of, of furthering yourself in your business and more success, whether it took three months or three years, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. It's, it's how you handled that, which I'm very impressed. Thanks. You know? Well, yeah. I, th I think it comes from, from being a single mom, at least in my opinion, it's been my, I raised my daughter um, by myself. She's grown now um, and has kids of her own, but um, I've always been the type of person that uh, you figure stuff out. You just you just figure it out. You figure out what it is you want to do, then you figure out what you need to do to do it, and then you just do it. <laughs> um, and I've never been afraid to ask for for help. Um, matter of fact, my parents <clears throat> have told me no many times in my life, and that just made me want it that much more. And I figured out how to do it on my own. So <laughs> that's a huge lesson, though. People need to learn. There's too many people holding themselves back because you're not willing to ask for help with one one way or the other, like whether it's for money or just asking in general. So, yeah. I mean, that is huge. That was huge in your growth. Let me tell you, I've been there, done that many times. So, yay. All right, you guys, I've tortured Angela enough, long enough on this live. Hopefully you've got some great tips, but also maybe some new awareness on things you can do to hire and get more streamlined and productive in your business. Um, please ask for help, whether it's from me or her or somebody else that you're working with, get to that next step and, and really get more automated, delegated and systematized. You will see more cash flow and clients. I know you will. So thank you, Angela, that helpful chick.com you guys. We'll talk to you soon.